They're clipping. They're out there in the world. They're clipping. Right. Fuck it. <laughs> All right, dads. Well, good to see you again. Uh, it's the end of the year. I think we've put out a bunch of content. I'm happy about it. I'm glad we did it. Um, and again, we continue to diversify and put out new stuff. I wanted to do this because I've seen a lot of YouTubers do this. And I think in my personal life, I've experienced um, a lot of my friends, you know, a lot of my friends are artists, they're musicians, and they're, um, I think one thing that they notice uh, about the work that MES does um, is, is, is they see themselves in it. In other words, like they see themselves with that same kind of ambition, uh, that same kind of creative drive, um, but there's there's something missing, right? There's and th a lot of times people have a difficult time, uh, spend a lot of effort figuring out what that is, you know. And um, and I and I do. I've I've spent some time talking to my friends about how to do it, you know. Um, now this does not mean that I'm an expert at YouTube or um, that I. I know exactly how to grow a channel and get famous and all those things. Obviously, I don't know any of those things. But what I do know is the barriers that stop you from the beginning, the, the, you know, the stuff that you ruminate, tend to ruminate on, like as a human being, uh, you know, before you get started on things, you know, uh, when, when you're feeling discouraged. So that's kind of why I wanted to do like a studio evolution, because I want people to know what MES started with, right? Um, and so we'll just get right to it. You know, our studio, uh, we, <laughs> you know, I operate out of my home, but we, uh, we record on whatever we have, you know, I, I think probably one of the greatest things is that we recorded an entire album with very, very limited, uh, gear. And I wanted to show you some of the stuff that we use, actually all the stuff we used. I didn't have like a treated room. It was just sort of the, the room in front of my house or like the room at the front of my house. It was hot in the summers uh, because it had a window unit. And so we couldn't turn it on in the summers when we're recording, obviously, because you have that really loud, low hum. Um, <clears throat> and so we would just sweat in there trying to record tunes. Um, but we used one mic for the whole recording for our entire first album, the self-titled Mariachi Entertainment System. We used one mic, and it was this Shure uh, SM57 uh, microphone. Now, if you don't know Shure, um, you know this is like this is like a ninety dollar mic. Uh, but man, this thing is freaking bulletproof. I mean, I'm not even joking. It's bulletproof, uh, and it sounds pretty good. I mean, most of the time when you go to live gigs, I mean, this is what they're gonna have. They get kicked around, thrown around. Always sound great. Um, they're not something that you generally see for recording a lot. Uh, but see, that's the first part is that like, just because it isn't normally used for that doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, a lot of people I will see, you know, that recommend microphones, um, you, they, uh, they say, you know, you can use this, you can use that and the other, and they never recommend a dynamic mic like this. Usually it's a condenser mic, you know, for your kind of all purpose. And then, uh, maybe a ribbon mic for some more sensitive thing. And you can really get into the minutiae. You can really, really start, and you should. You should, if you're an aspiring, you know, YouTuber, if you're an aspiring uh, artist that wants to know about sound and music and engineering, you're going to start doing that yourself. You should do the research, but don't, you know, this is going to be just fine with $90 mic, you know, and after this, I'm going to show you uh, where I get my equipment because I think that's just as important. Like, I know, like for me, you know, I might say, well, 90 bucks is, is not a lot of money, but for someone else that might be just like way outside of the ballpark for somebody else right so we'll get to that in a bit but you know this is all we used and to sort of power it to give it gain i use this i don't even know what it's called it's the studio v3 art um and it's it's so like and it, i think it is it's designed for people who don't really know what they're doing because it's got these sort of presets you know that essentially i think what they are like equalization settings you know you've got uh, well, yeah, it says flat, so that kind of tells me it's kind of like an EQ, um, warm and and uh, OPL. I don't even know what that means, um, but it's got phantom power. Um, your input and output game, and that that's pretty much it. This was also like ninety dollars. 
Um, and I know for a fact that ART makes one that similarly says one channel, right? Um, you know, it just takes one mic at a time. There's nothing special at all. I know that ART makes like a 50 or $60 version of that. That looks exactly like it's black. Um, <clears throat> can't remember what it's called, but I imagine that if I had known about that, then I would have used it to record that album. Um, and without any kind of barriers at all. Uh, the last, the second to last thing that I used was this thing. This is a Zoom R16. Uh, it has eight uh, combination inputs, XLR and quarter inch. Um, and what I would do is I would I would plug the mic into this 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 amp, and I'd put it into channel one, and I, I'd put like bass or something, you know. And, and this has all the functionality. I'm not gonna go too deep, but it has basically all the functionality you need. If you need a, you know, a click, there's a click in there. You can set it to very, very precise settings on the click. And um, and not just that, but uh, like what I would do is I would set a click and then I would go to like the 16th track. You know, you can press this button and it flips over to, to the other 16th. So this is one through eight. And then you flip it over and this is nine through 16. So I put like on track 16, I would put like a one, two, three, four. And that would be like the count off. <clears throat> Or any vocal cues that I needed to give. Uh, and then I just go back to one. Record the bass. Pull it out. Stick it into two. Still powered through the the, the uh, V3 over here. Record the vihuela. Pull that out. Stick it in. You know. Uh, record the, um, the guitar. Pull that out. Stick it back in. Record trump the two, you know, trumpet. Trumpet two. Uh, and then, uh, you know, depending if those vocals, I put some vocals or I would do violin, 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 flip over to channel nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, however many violins I wanted, I would just stick them all in there and I would just keep pulling it out and, and putting it back in. Uh, and that's, that's what I use. I recorded a whole album. Now this is pricey. This I think is like $400, but if you don't need the 16 tracks and the reason why I did that was because my computer was very limited, like. I couldn't record I couldn't record that many tracks at once on my computer but I could run 16 like just barely <laughs> you know so I would record on this thing and then put them into my my old crummy um, Mac the the little the Mac mini I had a Mac mini this was all this was back in 2000 I bought it like in 2012 I think um, <clears throat> and so I had that in 2014 when I started doing MES and it was, it was already kind of on its last legs. Uh, but to give you one more example of how like your equipment shouldn't limit to limit you. I had a, uh, a sewer surfing. We did sewer surfing and it's a really heavy trumpet part. You know, there's a part where like the, the trumpet, it has this, uh, really cool melody and I wanted to make sure that, and so I, I plugged in all everything that I wanted, but there's a switch here. There's a switch here because the Zoom has onboard mics. It has these little vents here that they're onboard microphones, right? I mean, they're tiny. They can't be great, right? Like, they they have to be awful. Um, <clears throat> well, I had that button switched on, and the onboard mics are for channels 7 and 8. So I had I had trumpets one and one and two running through seven and eight, um, and I had the onboard mics turn on. So even though I was messing with this and I thought I was getting sound through there, and I had the mic, you know, right in front of the trumpet, and the zoom was kind of far away. It was like over here in the corner from from me playing the trumpet. I didn't notice until actually after the song came out and I was wondering actually during post-production, I was wondering why like it sounded so different and it was really echoey and I, you know, I was like, man, like, and I kept recording it, but I was so short on time. I was just like, whatever. So uh, I didn't find out until later. I recorded it with the onboard mics. Well, I never went back to record it. I just didn't really see the, the point. Like it sounded fine. Um, there was nothing really wrong with it. Um, do I think it could have sounded better with, with that? Sure. I mean, a little bit, you know, yeah, it would have been, it would have been, it would have been easier in post to do the EQ and the compression, which by the way, uh, that's the other thing, your DAW, you know, your DAW that you use, whatever. I, at that time I was using Logic Pro X, uh, but I could have done it with, 
uh, GarageBand, and I probably could still do a lot with GarageBand because I only use I, I use mostly like two plugins, you know, and that's your compressor and your equalizer. Um, I'm still learning how to use those. They're very, very. Uh, I mean, they're your bread and butter, but they're also like, you know, they're they they take a bit to learn, you know. So so I wanted to to just basically show you like don't let your tools get in the way of what you want to do like just start and if all you have is onboard mics if you decide you know what like my budget can like uh they make an r8 zoom makes an r8 which is like it's half the price you know and like be creative if you're saying like well i i i need a multi-track recorder but i i can't do a multi-track recorder and the um and uh, and and a, and a, re a regular mic like even like a sure or something like that then just use the ones that are on there like is it going to sound great well no but if you're just starting out no mic is going to make you sound like no great mic okay so another good example um the uh sure sm7b uh this thing is a 400 hundred dollar mic i finally like invested in it and i love it and it does things that i don't know how it does what it does but it does and it's great um but mostly it's it's helpful in post-production you know whereas before i felt like the mics that i was using were getting a lot of detail right um really they were just picking up a lot of garbage you know and this seems to pick up less garbage and so uh <laughs> when i'm in post i just have a lot easier time eqing i have a lot easier time compressing it sounds way closer to what i want it to sound like in post you know uh so that's kind of like and but if you don't know how to do that stuff then this isn't going to do you any good anyway you know you might as well start with the onboard mics of this crappy thing you know what i mean because you don't know what the hell you're doing anyway and that's okay like it's okay to just not know what you're doing just go just go, just start making because it's better to have one piece of shit creation than it is to have a bunch of ideas that torment you all day, every day. Like, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. Like, or a whole bunch of incomplete nothings, you know, just like things that aren't finished at all. Um, you know, that, 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 that's really, really easy to happen too. Sometimes you, you getting started is not the problem. You have all this inspiration, um, and you start on this project and you're working on it and you're very, very, uh, headstrong and everything's going well. And then all of a sudden you get lost. <clears throat> it happens to everybody. And I don't think that it ever stops happening. Um, because things do not go, they're never going to go the way you want them to or the way you think they're going to. In your mind, it, it sounds or it looks a certain way. And then when you start piecing it together and actually putting something tangible in front of you and you start going like, this is not at all what I imagine. And this is where everyone gets stuck. And when I say everyone, I mean like I get stuck there. Every artist ever out there gets stuck at that point. The difference is is instead of being work because you're on un you're unsure what what is it going to look like now if i keep going and and how do i keep going what is it going to look like then and and you it's scary well just keep going like even if you don't know what to do just go like just go you know what i mean like remember your framework remember like okay if i just put all these things down even if they don't seem like they go together You'll start to have it like it'll, that 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 cloudiness will start to clear up. I talk with my hands a lot, and uh, and you'll get you'll get somewhere and you'll finish. And it might not be what you wanted. It might not even be great. It might not even be good. But it will be done, and you can move on to the next thing. And you can start to um, start to improve on your process. Start to understand. Okay, what the hell just happened there? Okay. Well, we don't know yet, so let's make another one, and and then and then and then you start. And before you know it, you get like a little process going, and that's the way you do things, and uh, and, and and then you just go. And then before you know it, you've got ten songs and an album, or you've got a whole collection of whatever it is that you're making. Uh, the last thing I guess is sound, uh, like uh, what is it called? Treating your room, right? So these things behind me, you see them. Those are mostly for show. They look kind of cool i think they make the place look studio like you know uh but they the the purpose of of treating a room is to reduce the amount of echo 
you know when you when you make sound you don't want it bouncing around you don't want things ringing because then that uh, again that gets hard to control in post those things you can buy cheaply you know like some that uh you can put on your wall and they look cool and they'll do a little bit you know they'll, they'll do a little bit but there are better things and there are more efficient ways to treat your room this big red thing that i have in my window is actually homemade like i made that with insulation um and some like one by four pine you know um <clears throat> so and that thing works great like that thing really sucks up a lot of sound and i've got a few panels around um, that really helped to suck up that reverb. Uh, and as a matter of fact, on YouTube, I found a guy who was like doing a DIY kind of thing with sound panels. And he was using towels, just like bathroom towels. And those things were amazing. They were totally just killing all the echo in his room. I mean, it sounded amazing. Um, and he just, he just used towels, you know. And so uh, this thing where you need... Uh, and I guess that's another reason why I'm not too like keen on like being like check out my my 2020 studio tour is because it doesn't look Pinterest worthy. It doesn't have to, you know. Like I, I also feel like there's a balance between like keeping a neat workspace and keeping an aesthetic workspace that is conducive to your creative process and your comfort. Really, it's comfort, you know. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. There's a balance between that and and uh, and then and just cosmetics. You know, when you have, um, you know, when you start using tape lights or, or, or string lights or rope lights, you know, for effect, but they don't even help you like read things. Like if you need to read something or if you need to see something, like if they're not that, then, you know, okay, you're going to look cool, but, um, you know, but, but focus on your content, you know, make good content, just do that and, and you'll be okay. So that's how I started. That's how we recorded our first record. And over time, I've built up uh, a little bit more, a few things. And so we'll go through some of the things that I've, I've kind of made. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> over time, I've kind of uh, gotten, built a few more amenities into my studio. I used to have um, uh, Audio-Technica, the uh, headphones. I used to have the MX or M50 x uh and uh, and they're very 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 good headphones and then i busted the drivers on them i don't know how and i use these crappy things what are they called one audio they're awful they have this awful build quality they sound okay i mix and master on those you know i used to i used to mix and master on apple headphones and then I, I went to Audio Technicas, and they tell you you shouldn't even be doing that on headphones. Like it's a bad idea, and it kind of is. But again, don't let like people like the big no nos of the industry don't let those things stop you from creating. Just go. If it's gonna sound like crap, it's gonna sound like crap. Let me tell you something. Those first recordings that I have, Ducktales that we have, they're clipping. They're out there in the world. They're clipping. Right. Fuck it, <laughs> you know. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, those are the things that got the channel started. I don't think people really even even noticed that. No one's ever commented on that, you know. And they don't sound great at all, man. They're not EQ'd with. There's too much bass. It's awful. But you know, got got started, right? Now we've kind of evolved into like now that I understand the work more. Now that I understand uh, equalization. Now that I understand compression. Now that I understand some of the things a little bit better. I started upgrading to. Some things that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try to hold on to for a long time. I'm not going to be, I, I love like window shopping for gear. I don't know who doesn't love doing that. Uh, but realistically, there's nothing else that I need. I have these Yamaha, uh, what is it, HS5. Um, you know, I've got a couple of monitors here that I really only use like my laptop and I'll plug one in most of the time. So I have the two monitors. If I really get into some trouble with like a lot of tracks, I'll plug in that second monitor and I'll have the three screens and I can, I can see everything a lot better. Um, but truth be told, even then on our second record, you know, when, when I wasn't feeling comfortable in my space, I would just take my laptop with all those tracks and just deal with the lack of space on my, on my uh, laptop screen, you know, just, just deal with it, you know, because, there's nothing else to do. 
you know uh i've got this tiny little arturia you know 28 key midi controller um i do have an apollo twin duo and that's really nice like it's helpful um uh and it, and it has a couple of amenities really expensive um and it's worth it because of the compressor just from just with the compressor and the uh, the, the LA2A and the uh UA610B the that amp um just those two things are are pretty much worth it um i've got a tiny little crappy $50 um uh, amp uh headphone amp or headphone distribution system it's awful um and I've got like a twenty dollar ring light, like that I'm using right now. Um, you know what I mean? And, and and the consistency, like the quality of my videos, is kind of like up and down. I mean, you can see like right now I'm using my iPad camera. Use whatever. I do have for video. I do have this Lumix uh, G85X uh, with a really really fast lens. Uh, this is like a one like a f one point seven. Um, which will give you that really nice, you know, if you can balance out your lighting, everything gives you that really nice depth of field and uh, gives you a lot of aperture to play with. Um, although it is kind of, lim I mean, you can't zoom, so. Um, you know, but I have that. Um, but just use your cell phone. Just use your cell I've, There's a lot of our videos, uh, I mean, yes, we, we all just use our cell phones. We just use our cell phones to record the video, and that seems to work just fine. Um and that that's really it like that's the only thing that's changed is that i have that 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 apollo twin duo um i'm still working on a, on a mac laptop and i have this mic and i've treated my room a little um and it and it does it helps a lot but but that's really it you know and so i guess my final word on it is money that's not my final word but money american musical supply is the place where I get all my gear because they offer no interest, no credit check, payment plans. The payments can be really manageable. Uh, I have bought, you know, two thousand dollars or about fifteen hundred dollars worth of gear at like eighty bucks a month. You know, this is bigger than a normal credit card. But with credit card, you know, you've got interest and you're just paying for nothing. Uh, with this, yeah, the payments are going to be bigger and there's really less room for negotiation, but, um, you know, you just, you just, you know, if you have it, um, you know, you can make your cart work out. You can actually like make it work out to where, let's say you can't, you can't afford a mic, right? You, I'm pretty sure you can go right there and right now and look and they'll sell it to you for $33 a month. You know, the first people will be, the first payment will be a little bit bigger. But they'll send it to you outright. You make that first payment of like 40 bucks and then the other ones are like 28, you know, and then you've got a sure mic and you go and you build slowly like that, you know, and that's exactly how I did these things. There's other equipment that I have. I have a, a, a Scarlett Octo Pre, which is like an eight channel preamp um, that I now use with this thing because uh, I use that for live stuff and I've got about six to eight um, 57s and 58s that I use for live performances, but that's a whole other thing. Like that's at that, at that point, that's overkill. That's like, I'm trying to make a living doing something unrelated, uh, to what I need to do here. All that stuff is totally unnecessary, but American musical supply afforded me the opportunity to do those things, to, to buy like the headphones that I needed to buy that, that universal audio, uh, to buy, um, this mic, and the cloud lifter, I have a cloud lifter. If you're going to use a dynamic mic like this, um, you know, like this too, you know, cloud lifter is going to do you a lot of good. I mean, Jesus, man, that thing is miraculous. But anyway, don't let your fear, like, get in the way of making something. Take all those questions. What if it's bad? It, it's probably going to be. That's okay. It's supposed to be. Like, no one just makes a good thing right out. If you don't make a bad thing, you can never make a good thing. There is no such thing as catastrophic failure. You know, like, if you put out a video and it gets one view from you um, and no one else sees it, that's not a failure. 
you're still here, you're still alive, like, you know, make another one. Did you enjoy it? Was it fun? Was the process fun? Uh, are you proud of what you did? That's it. That's all you need. Um, you, you, uh, you know, waiting for other people to tell you how good something is or isn't is a recipe for catastrophic failure. You know, that is something that will be very, very difficult to overcome. But use whatever. Use whatever you have, man. Use a potato mic if you have to. Um, but please just make things. Just make up and stop looking for excuses. And excuses can be anything. Um, <clears throat> if your excuse is like I had just a friend of mine tell me the other day. She said she was wondering about licensing uh, and cover tunes. And she's like a little bit nervous. And it is it's very confusing. Um, and rather than explain the whole thing about uh, copyright, copyright claims, you know, basically I summed it up like this, avoid Nintendo, avoid Disney and like, like, and then just do it. You know, the worst thing that can happen is like your video will get taken down and, and that's it. You know, um, that's, that's, that's really it. I mean, and if you do it three times, then you don't have a channel, but even if you don't have a channel, just, I don't know, to me, it's just like starting a new one. Um, and she was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to do some more research. And I'm like, why? Like, why are you going to, like, you already have all the knowledge. You, I just gave you all the knowledge you're going to need. Because once you find out all that stuff, at the end of the day, it's going to mean the same thing. You, all you're going to do is going to go, well, okay, I better avoid Disney and 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 Nintendo, you know, like it's not going to change anything, but it's her fear that motivates her to stay in, in a, in a place that she's familiar with it, which, which is to do research, uh, and, uh, find out more before she gets started. <clears throat> just get started. Just go do it. I don't even know why you're watching this video and just stop, stop. You know what you want to do. Go do it later.